So we just wrapped up a thorough survey of the basic features of the motor simulator and how to use it, but we glossed right over some of the more advanced features. So we're gonna cover those things in this video, including dual motor simulation, the advanced motor options that you can edit, as well as the URL encoding that takes place when you wanna save specific simulation results. So if we expand the show advanced options, we have three new fields that we can edit. The first one here is the motor temperature, and this is the starting temperature of the simulation. So if you have a situation where you're doing an overheat in prediction time, it's assuming that we're starting with the motor at 60 degrees Celsius. Say you wanted to start with an actual cold motor, well you could drag that down to room temperature or wherever you wanted, and you'll see that the time to overheat, if you're doing a simulation where, let's just increase our grade here so that the motor overheats, um, uh, so here we see 31 minutes to overheat when it starts at room temperature. Say you've already been riding the bike and the motor's sitting at 80 degrees. Well, the next time you run into a hill, that time has been reduced down to 20 minutes. And if the motor's already super hot, like 105 degrees, it drops down further still. So that gives an option for a better understanding of the overheat temperature time. The next option here is a custom motor KV. Now this is a really, really powerful tool when the motor that you want to simulate is not in our drop-down simulation list. Editing the KV, so KV is the RPM per volt of the motor, that's the unloaded speed, how fast the motor spins at a given voltage when there's no resistance on the motor. It's the single most important parameter that defines a motor's performance. Now when Grin gets our motors, we choose a specific motor winding that has the target RPM per volt winding speed that we want. But a lot of motors people happen to have don't match the speeds of the Grin motor. What this does is it simulates if that motor is wound for a faster or a slower RPM per volt and updates all the parameters accordingly. So if you have a direct drive motor, say it's similar in look to the generic nine continent motors, but your motor spins at seven RPM per volt, well, you can use our simulator and change that to seven RPM per volt instead of nine. And now you'll get an output curve characteristic of that same motor as though it had been wound to a slower winding speed. If you have a motor that you want to simulate and it's not a model that we already have, you can use this tool to get a pretty good approximation by selecting a motor from the drop-down list that's similar in form factor and style. So say you have a small geared motor, you're not quite sure of the manufacturer, but it looks about the size of the Shengyi motors. Uh, you could just choose the Shengyi motor simulate it and then adjust the KV to match it. So maybe your motor measures at 10.5 RPM per volt. So change that to 10.5. And now we'll have a realistic predictor for how that motor will behave. There's not a huge variation from manufacturer to manufacturer on motor performances. Um, and, uh, and this will give you a much better first order result than anything else. Finally, there's an option to play with the wind speed. Uh, so we have this showing in tailwind, so that would be how fast the wind's coming in from behind. Um, and this is really important for people that are trying to especially understand system performance at higher speeds. We get a lot of people contacting us saying, hey, the simulator predicted that I was going 50 kilometers an hour, but I vehicle topped out at 42. Uh, and the reason for that is not that the simulator is inaccurate, it's that people didn't model the exact environmental parameters around which their motor was operating. So as a simple example, if I'm just running with zero wind speed upright with this particular set of motors and battery voltages, I have 41 kilometer an hour predicted speed. If I happen to be riding with a 20 kilometer an hour tailwind, uh, which is not an especially windy day, um, suddenly my speed goes up to 46 kilometers an hour. And you notice that my energy consumption dropped dramatically down to six watt hours per kilometer, whereas at no wind speed, I had 16 watt hours per kilometer. So over double the range just from having that tailwind. And the same thing happens, of course, with a headwind. So if you were to have a headwind, you just model a negative tailwind. So say you just have a really light breeze of 10 kilometers an hour. Well, that's going to reduce my range and increase my consumption by a quantified amount. So now it's gone up to 20 watt hours kilometer instead of 15.9. Uh, and you can see my speed is decreased. So this one is really, really handy to just understand how sensitive your setup is to different vehicles, to different wind speeds, um, and so that you better understand the range of what you experience in the real world. As much as you can model the real world with these drop downs, then your output will be more and more accurate with what you experience. So another advanced option that we added a few years ago that's super duper handy is the motor system B. 
So right at the bottom of the parameter list, there's a tab to open system B. And what this does is superimposes two simulator graphs, one on top of each other. So if you're using the simulator as a tool to compare, oh, what happens if I use this motor versus that motor, or if I have this much power versus that much, or a 20 inch wheel versus a 26 inch wheel, instead of changing them back and forth and remembering and comparing notes, you can just open a simultaneous uh, additional tab with a whole different set of motor parameters. Uh, and so here I've just opened a system B and now I've got system A with a nine continent motor, system B with a crystallite motor, but otherwise running the same battery, the same controller, same vehicle parameters. And now you can see how these two systems will stack up. Uh, so clearly here uh, for the unloaded speed, you can see that the uh, line on the right here, this is system B, has a faster expected speed of 40.9 kilometers an hour than system A, but you can see that their performance in the you know, current limited region is almost identical. Same motor power, same torque output, uh, and they're running exactly the same loads. Uh, so the numeric data on the bottom now shows you what you have for both systems, and you can individually drag and move the cursors around to see how each of them compare. So if, for instance, I wanted to compare at this one point of acceleration when it's at 25 kilometers an hour, well, you can see that the data for the motor power, the motor efficiencies, they're almost all identical because they're two very similar motors. But the unloaded speed, you know, when you're at that crossover point between motor power and uh, vehicle power, the crystallite motor is faster because it's a faster wind motor, a higher kV motor. Um, so this is really frequently used when people are comparing two more different motors to so say you're not sure if you should get a direct drive motor or one of the medium power geared motors, let's say the Shengi motor, um, and, uh, and you just you want to understand how the two systems will stack up. Um, if you choose auto throttle in both of these, um, then you have the option to compare them both at exactly the same speed. Uh, so you could just drive, drag that back so that they're um, at that same speed point, and you can see in this case the direct drive motor is a bit more efficient than the geared motor because it's doing a low power output. If we were to compare at a lower portion of the speed range, you might see a point where the geared motor is more efficient. Um, actually, I could do that more easily by increasing the load. So, say we're climbing a small hill, four and a half percent grade, um, and now you see, oh, no, in this case, the direct drive is still more efficient than that point. Um, so yeah, that's a very handy utility um, when you're really doing A versus B comparisons here. Um, you could also compare the same motor only with a different vehicle parameter. So I might choose the nine continent motor for both of these. Um, let's see, 27, um, but I might in one instance compare having a 90 kilogram vehicle and the next one, say you're carrying a cargo load and you're 130 kilograms. And now you can just see that the, the load line of one curve goes up more steeply than the other one. And you can see your expected uh, performance differences. Um, uncheck auto throttle, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so that would be the full throttle comparison between those two. Uh, so really, really powerful. Um, at the very bottom here, there's a choice between compare or add. So when you have two systems being simulated, there's also the option to simulate what happens if both of those motor setups are on the same vehicle. And so this is handy, of course, for simulating dual wheel drive motors. So if you've got a trike with two motors side by side, or you might have a front and back wheel, and you're not obliged to run the same systems. So when I click add, I can have a different wheel size on the front versus the back. I can have different motor controllers. I can even be running at different battery voltages. Um, it really simulates as though you had two totally independent drives, but coupled on the same bicycle. So all the parameters related to the vehicle are grayed out on system B because you only have one vehicle. So you choose your vehicle air drag, the total vehicle weight, total human power, um, and then it simulates how the output of both motors combined when driving this vehicle. And you'll see some pretty interesting shaped curves, of course, because you have points where one controller hits the current limit before the other one. Um, and, uh, and ultimately, you can really understand at any given point how much contribution both motors are contributing and what their relative efficiency is. Um, so here you see, in terms of the motor power, the efficiency, um, it also gives a net for what's the combined output of both of these things. Um, and you'll also notice that the blue curve um, automatically becomes pounds of thrust. 
Uh, and that's because in a combined vehicle, the Newton meters isn't nearly as useful as the thrust moving the vehicle forwards. So there is no option to show that in Newton meters. That shows, uh, that shows it in as thrust. So that's it for dual motor options. Uh, at any point, you can close system B and go back down to just the system that you had in system A. Now one thing, uh, one final point I wanted to mention is the capability of using the URL that's recorded when you make these changes. So every time you run a simulation and you create some custom parameters and simulate it, you notice that the URL at the top in your browser is getting updated. Now here it's got a ton of information because we have two systems with a bunch of customized parameters. I can copy that entire URL and paste it save it in a bookmark or anything, and it will regenerate that exact simulation that we just had with all the same parameters selected. Uh, so that can be a really handy way of making shortcuts or sending links to Grins or to other people on your research team where you want to show a hypothetical scenario and you don't have to recreate all the choices from the drop-down menu. Uh, when you start with just the basic simulator, um, you'll see this, the URL just has nothing on it. The moment that I choose, say, a custom motor, custom wheel size, and simulate it, you'll now see that motor and that wheel size is encoded up in the URL. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the graph display. Uh, when we had two systems being compared, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of lines and busyness in the graph. So if I just make two different motor choices, uh, and it can be quite cumbersome to look at and understand all of that, Every one of these graphs can be hidden for the sake of clarity. So if you don't really care to see the torque output of each motor, you don't really care about the efficiencies, and you're just wanting to compare the motor power output as well as the vehicle load, you can just uncheck those checkboxes and then simplify this graph to show just the details that you want to see. All the numeric data is still available at the bottom, so you can still see your efficiencies at any point, but you don't necessarily, you lose the visual clutter of having eight separate lines drawn on that one interface.